Hey, what's up guys? It's Cypher from CypherPK.com and today I am bringing you my Templar Stamina build. Now this build can be played at about any level just because it uses all crafted gear and the jewelry sets can be, you know, you can choose and pick whichever jewelry sets that you can find at your level. It doesn't really make a huge difference and this Templar is meant to be played pre-Vet 15 but even after Vet 15 you can solidify the build and it's definitely a build that you can play on any level and even any class and when I say any class I'm talking about the armor sets the armor sets are kind of universal uh, and they will work on just about any stamina build we're talking stamina sork stamina nightblade stamina DK and stamina Templar so let's start off with the build my Templar right now is level 48 he's in Cyrodiil he's battle level to v15 keep in mind he is using level 48 gear it's very important uh, before v15 that you're actually using gear that is your level if you're using gear that is under your level even by a few levels you'll miss out on a lot of stats and bonuses so it's a dual wield 2h setup let's start with the dual wield bar i've been playing this for the past week and a half so i'm not a master at the stamina templar but i've done enough with it to where i feel confident with the build and it's definitely something i, I recommend for 1vx or 1v1 gameplay dual wield bar we have repentance repentance is a very strong templar ability uh, it's going to give you 10% regen across the board, and after you kill someone, um, or someone is dead near you, you can actually cast this ability free, and you'll get stamina and health back. Now, this will work with dead enemies, dead allies, uh, even dead pets, and um, the Engine Guardian set will also be able to give you back uh, health and stamina if you cast it near you know any uh, dead corpse. So, it's a really good ability for your resource management. Biting Jabs is the Stamina Morph, it's going to be your bread and butter DPS, it's very good, it gives you Major Savagery which has it, it increases your critical rating, so you're going, to increase, you're going to be critting really hard, especially if you're using dual daggers, I'm, do, I'm using dual maces, but I'm considering once I get Twin Blade and Blunt, because I still don't have a lot of the passives, to use daggers just to boost my critical rating really high, and have all my you know Biting Jabs crit pretty much, so really heavy hitting damage, it's AoE based, you can cancel it, um, it's just a very strong very strong stamina ability. Uh, blinding Javelin. This is going to be, you know, Binding Javelin. This is going to be your knockdown and your CC from your 2H bar. It's very good. It also hits extremely hard. You don't want to... Sometimes I underestimate just how hard this ability hits. And if you throw a couple of them into someone, you're going to knock their health out. And sometimes it's a very good uh, ranged ability. Because this, uh, this build doesn't really have much range. It does have Binding Javelin. And Binding Javelin gives it just enough range to where you can still be a threat from range. Throw a couple of these into your opponent. If they're not blocking them and they're getting hit with them, uh, they're definitely going to be taking a beating. Purifying Ritual. This is going to be your cleanse. It's really, really useful because this acts like the Igneous Shield passive that gives you 30% extra healing. If you cast this ability, you're going to create a little circle around you. Uh, first of all, you're going to remove any negative effects on you. And you're going to create this little circle around you that heals you. Uh, over time, but also there's a passive in Templar skill line that gives you 30% extra healing while you're standing inside the circle. So as long as you're standing inside the circle, your rally, your vigor, your breath of life, um, will all give you extra health by 30%. Now I am using breath of life. It's not a very good ability for a stamina Templar, but it's all I have right now. As a uh, as a uh, you know, I'm still level 48, so I haven't unlocked vigor yet. Now, when I do have Vigor, I'll be replacing this with Vigor, but you can still get the job done with Breath of Life. It's still a decent Magicka dump, because you don't have that many besides Cleanse, and um, it'll, it'll just help you, you know, get that little bit of extra healing until you get your Vigor. Crescent Sweep. Now, I don't really like this ultimate at all. It, I, per, I don't have Fighter's Guild uh, ultimate, which is uh, Flawless Dawnbreaker. So until I get Flawless Dawnbreaker, I'm going to be using this. Now this ultimate, it's good, but it's not good enough. I feel like Flawless Dawnbreaker is a much better ultimate uh, to replace this ultimate. It's going to give you more damage. It's more. It's going to give you more damage and more passive damage because of the uh, because of the seven percent or eight percent extra weapon damage. Um, it's just a better ultimate. Flawless Dawnbreaker is a better ultimate than this. This needs to be buffed as far as damage goes. It needs to be buffed. Um, but for now, it works, and you know I'm getting the job done with it. So I'm, I don't feel too bad about using this. Sometimes I'll let my ultimate stack up really high just because I feel like I'm doing more damage with my other abilities, and I don't want to take time to use it. But other times, I'll use it just for the damage over time effect, and I'll use just a little bit extra, extra pressure on your opponents if you really feel like you need the extra dot. Back bar. This is our 2H bar. 
we do have Stampede and we do have Executioner. Um, I do like to play with an Execute regardless of what build I play, um, so that's why we wanted to throw that in there. And as far as uh, Gap Closers, Templars don't really have a Stamina Gap Closer, not that I know of, so Stampede is going to be a decent Gap Closer. And the reason I'm going with Stampede and not Crit Charge is because that 60% Snare is going to help you land most of your Biting Jabs. Biting jabs is not a targeted ability. You have to aim with your biting jabs. So if someone's running out of your way, you're not going to land those jabs. The 60% snare is going to help you land them a little better. We're also using shuffle. Now, you might be wondering, you know, shuffle removes snares and stuff, but so does purifying ritual. But it's not an overkill because of the fact that shuffle actually um, gives you snare immunity. As On top of the snare immunity, it also gives you 20% dodge chance. So that's why I prefer... To, I mean, I, I run both, Shuffle and Cleansing Ritual, and it gives you some insane survivability. Now over here, this is an open spot. I use Total Dark, you can use Wrecking Blow, you can pretty much put any ability here that fits your playstyle. The reason I like Total Dark is because it's a reflect on any single target Magicka ability that is thrown at you. We're talking Soul Strike, we're talking Concealed Weapon, Lava Whips, Crystal Fragments. This is going to shut down a majority of the magic builds that try to fight you. So it's, it's a very hard counter uh, to magic builds, and that's why I use it. You can use Wreck and Blow here if you want more damage. You can use pretty much anything here. Um, and uh, it's, it's, an, it's an open slot for your playstyle. Rally, of course, you need Rally for the uh, weapon damage buff and the healing over time. Now, I do have Crescent Sweep again over here. I don't really have any other ultimate to replace it. You do want to have one uh, Aegic Spear ability on each bar. For the uh, passive that gives you 10% extra critical and 10% extra damage against blocking targets. That's really important. Um, so, you, so you might just keep this one here and then put Flawless Dawnbreaker on the front part once you get it. Uh, let's go into the armor sets really quickly. Now I am an Imperial, but you can play this with just pretty much any, uh, any stamina class. We're talking Red Guard, Wood Elf, Khajiit, Orc, uh, Imperial. Those are my top picks. Those will get the job done really well, but you can play this with with just about any race, it doesn't really matter. But those are my top picks. Um, let's go into our armor sets. Now the armor sets is pretty simple. It's three sets. Five Hunting's Rage, five on the body, four more cooldown. So two more cooldown on the body, and then our two maces are more cooldown, and our two H is more cooldown. More cooldown is a nine trait set that came with Orsinium. It's gonna be pretty hard for, for you to find someone who can craft it, especially if you're on console, but you'll eventually find someone. It's a really good four piece. Now the four piece is the same as shield breaker, but the difference is you can craft this so you can make it on your weapons. Shield breaker is gonna be only on your body and you can choose whatever traits you want, uh, so on and so forth. It's just easier that way, less expensive. So more cool than four piece, five hunting's rage. Now I'm level 48, so I don't have that many options when it comes to jewelry. Now if you want to, you could go and try to get agility rings at your level but that's going to be a huge waste of money like unless you have millions of gold i would recommend that shadow walker might be a d better alternate but for now honestly i'm just using just three purple regular jewelry pieces it doesn't really matter i have robust on every jewelry piece and i have weapon damage on every jewelry piece now as far as weapon damage goes and regen you can customize this pretty well right now i'm running a very high weapon damage approach and i'll show you my stats in a second but i've also ran a regen approach and both of them play extremely well the damage approach is going to help you kill people faster, but the region approach is going to basically uh, give you a lot of that survivability. So, let me show you how my stats look like. I am running, all my glyphs are stamina glyphs by the way, 47 points in the stamina, I have 32k max stamina, 19k health, I do recommend at least 20k health, but I'm messing around with 19k health just because uh, I'm a rebel, and I like to live life on the edge, but at least 20k health fellas. Uh, now, as far as region goes, it's 2344 4 unbuffed. Our weapon damage is 3625 buffed. Our region is 2684 buffed. Now, our weapon damage goes a little bit higher after we light attack because we do have weapon damage uh, enchanted on our mace. So the weapon damage goes up to about 3800. Not too bad. So we're using the Serpent Mundestone, and I do recommend the Serpent over Warrior because you get more points, there's more, there's more things that boost your stamina regen compared to your weapon damage. Uh, so I'd rather just go Serpent and then build my weapon damage with, you know, Jewelry Glyphs and stuff like that. So that's the setup. Let's go into the Champion Tree. I do have quite a bit of Champion points. I believe I have, I can't see over here, is there a Champion rank? 
because I can't see it as, as a non-vet. I think I have 440 champion points. So let's look at how the champion points are laid out right now. Tower, we got 10 points into Magician, 21 into Warlord. Now we do have some into Magician because there are some magic abilities being used. Once I drop Breath of Life or Vigor, I'll transition more of this into Warlord, but for now this is how I go. Uh, 67 points into Mooncalf, 10 into Magic Recovery. You'll notice the trend. I do want to have a lot of Salmon Recovery, but you also want to have some Magic Recovery because you do use some Magic Abilities with this build. 41 points into Tumbling. 24 points into Bless. This is very important. I might even put more points into this. Increasing your healing received uh, or healing that you cast um, is it's going to stack with any other healing bonus. So the 30% from Cleansing Ritual plus this 9.2%, uh, it's all going to stack. It's very useful. Over here, I have 20 points into Heavy Weapon Expert. It's going to increase our mace damage and our 2H damage. Light attacks. I do like to do a lot of heavy attacks into my uh, Biting Japs. So that's really useful. Now over here, we have 64 points into Mighty, 20 into Precise Strikes, 20 into Piercing. Now, honestly... Right now I have 20 points into piercing, but I don't have the twin blade and bunt passive that gives me an extra like 20% armor reduction armor reduction from the uh, maces. Once I get that, I'm going to drop most of these points and put them into precise strikes because you are critting a lot with this build. You are critting a lot because of the biting jabs uh, crit bonus and uh, you just have natural crit uh, with dual wield. So you're critting a lot and you want to boost your crit damage on top of your physical damage. So I do want to put more points into precise strikes. Over here we have 27 points into reducing critical damage, 80 points into Hardy, 40 into Elemental Defender, and about 2 points into Quick Recovery. Quick Recovery doesn't scale as well as um, Blessed, but it still scales enough. So the first couple points you put in there, you'll get the most out of it. So that is my build. I'm not a Werewolf or a Vampire. You can play this with Vampire, you can play this with Werewolf, it's up to you. I'm playing without either of them, and uh, I think I'm about to... Get attacked by someone. Hopefully I can show this build in action. At least in a smaller scale environment. Maybe I can lure one of these guys in here. I've never done this before in a build video. Someone commented on one of my builds saying that you never show yourself playing with the build. Well, that's because I stream every day with the builds. But I want to try to get someone over here so I can show you just how powerful this build can be. Uh, especially in a smaller scale environment. Hopefully I can get this Templar to come over here. I am level 48, but... I do look very intimidating, as you can see. Oh, screw it. Let's attack him anyways. Alright, guys. Thank you so much for watching this build video. I, very, I really appreciate it. I am sorry to that guy. He might have been a fan, but I still wanted to show the damage output. Thank you guys so much for watching. And this will be posted on cypherpk.com. And more, you can see other builds over there if you're interested. I'll see you guys uh, next time. Take care.